one of my favorite aspects of it is that it has individual throttle bodies stock. And being an all motor guy, there's nothing quite like the experience of having an individual throttle body car. Uh, the throttle response, the sound that it provides, it really creates that experience of what a proper sports car engine should be. Combine that with the high RPM nature of the motor, it just really ties the whole experience together. My 2007 BMW Z4 M Coupe. So this car is the outcast in the, in the garage. Growing up, I've been a Japanese sports car guy my entire life, uh, mostly Mazdas, RX-7s, RX-8s, Miatas. But um, I got to the point in my life where I was financially stable, <laughs> which is like kind of funny to say that. But uh, I was looking for a sports car and I wanted something that really ticked all the check boxes out of the gate. I didn't want to have to dive into it and do a serious build right off the bat. So in my book, the most important things that a, a sports car sh should have is number one, a special engine to be rear wheel drive, manual transmission, limited slip differential, and something stylish about it that, that sets it apart from the rest. And at the time in 2013, which is when I made this car purchase, uh, the BMW Z4 M Coupe kind of nailed all those check boxes right out of the gate. So uh, the thing that attracted me the most to this car was definitely the engine. Uh, the S54 is the last of BMW's high revving, naturally aspirated inline six motors. It's certainly what I would consider a special engine. It revs high, revs to 8,000 RPM has a very high piston speed. It's 11 and a half to one compression, which at the time of its release in the late 90s, that was very, very impressive for a factory motor. So the other thing that was really appealing to me with this car was that at the time I didn't own anything that was what you would call a grand touring car. Uh, I had pretty much dedicated sports cars, a lot of them being convertible or older 90s cars so they're noisier inside and they're not really cars that I would want to take on long trips. Definitely a fun car to go drive for an hour at a time and drive in a real spirited fashion but not something that I would want to you know take for a few hour drive. So. The Z4M for me really fit the bill for a GTS Grand Touring car, even though it's, I wouldn't say it's a full on Grand Touring car. Having a racing background uh, and growing up with the cars that I did, I really appreciate lightweight, very nimble, light on their feet, athletic sports cars. So even though I love the whole atmosphere that a Grand Touring car provides with a quieter cabin, a long hood out in the front with a big engine, uh, sitting very far back, right above the rear wheels. Um, the, the, the big downside with most Grand Touring cars is their weight. The Z4M is a car that really bridges the gap between full-on sports cars and Grand Touring cars. So this car weighs in at 3,280 pounds wet, which is not heavy, but it's not light. It's not FDR 7 light, which is around 26, 2700 pounds in the trim that mine are in. Um, but it's a, it's a great balance. I've taken this car on, on many trips and, and it's definitely a car that I, I love. It's my, one of my first go-to cars uh, when, it, when it comes time to pick something to, to travel across state lines with. So as far as modifications go for the car, going back to what I said earlier, um, the whole package out of the box is very comprehensive. It's already pretty fast, it already handles very well, it's got your limited slip differentials, rear wheel drive. There's not much that needs to be done 
I sh like out of the box, but being the person that I am, of course, I started touching stuff. So right now, it's a, it's a very mild setup. Uh, engine and drivetrain are completely stock. It does sit on a set of Bilstein PSS10 coilovers. Uh, at all four corners, I have a set of Apex EC7 wheels. Uh, other than that, it's just minor chassis reinforcements that to, to, to beef up known weak areas. Future plans for the car, because this has the S54 and because this is an individual throttle body car, BMW put a very thick plastic air box that dampens up the noise of the ITBs. And that's something that I really want to open up and let the car sing. I don't want to go necessarily crazy with the all motor mods because anytime you're making the engine breathe more and especially when it's, a, it's an already pretty efficient engine, uh, the subsequent uh, result of that is excess noise when you start opening everything up. So going forward, I do want to do a mild, naturally aspirated build on it. So that's going to include the carbon fiber CSL airbox, which will allow those ITBs, individual throttle bodies to make more of that glorious induction noise as you're driving. I want to do a nice set of exhaust manifolds and just kind of open up the exhaust as much as I can as quietly as I can, keyword quietly, because I still want to take this car on long journeys. Uh, and I'll top that off probably with a set of more aggressive can shafts. Some of the reasons why this is the best BMW that you've never heard of is one, it's a very low production car. BMW only brought over 1,812 copies of this to the US, Mexico, and Canada for the the short two year run that we got them. So it was 2006 to 2008. I think this is one of BMW's lowest volume cars. At the time, it was BMW's most rigid chassis in production, even more rigid than the E92 V8 M3. Um, that rigidity translates a lot while you're driving the car. It is, one, it, and it is definitely the most rigid car that I own in my garage. Like I said, it's the, it's the last BMW M car to have the S54 high revving inline six. And on top of that, it doesn't really look like anything else in the BMW lineup. Uh, it really, the styling of it really deviates from your typical three and five series and all, and all the rest of the cars. So I think that's one of the things that appeals to me the most is I just love the overall aesthetics of the car, especially from the side view. You really see the long hood and the fastback it just looks like a proper sports car. I always tell everybody this is my, my poor man's Aston Martin. So what does this car feel like to drive? Well, like I said, it really bridges the gap between a full-on sports car and a grand touring car. So the minute you hop in it, you're, you're immediately surrounded by a giant phallic hood. And that's one of the things that I actually really love about the car is the, the whole visual presentation that you get. You sit very low down in the cabin. It's actually kind of hard to see over the giant hood, but I, I, I prefer that in a, in a grand touring car. Um, you fire up the S54, you, you feel that really great throttle response. BMW did a fantastic job tuning the, the electronic throttle bodies, which I, I almost like hate to say it, but like this is one of the only uh, electronic throttle body cars that I really like the way the pedal responds to the to the driver's inputs. Um, the acceleration of it is, is very healthy with 330 horsepower stock. Uh, ringing the engine out to 8,000 RPM is very exciting. The just the whole experience you feel very James Bond dare I say esque when you're in the when you're in this car and that's one of the things that I love the most about it on top of that aside from having those creature comforts and and that that GT like experience it's still a car that you can really grab it by the scruff of the neck and just hoon it whenever you want Yeah! 
having that 3.2 liter a little bit more torquey engine that's geared well with the six-speed transmission means that you can get first and second gear oversteer pretty much at, at whenever the the mood strikes <laughs> So for a guy like me who, who really appreciates being able to asshole a car around, uh, this really fits the bill perfectly. But at the same time, you could take your lady out to dinner and, and just have a nice experience too if you want. It was BMW's most rigid car, even more rigid than the E92 V8 M3. <laughs> King bug just flew into my ear. <laughs> yeah. Can you? No, dude. So, what do you have to say to the people that call all BMW drivers douchebags? <laughs> what can I say? It's absolutely true. <laughs>